This is Byron Gordon for the SES Conference Channel. It is day three at Connected Marketing Week, and we just finished hearing from several individuals who are here talking on the uh, 140 characters exploring the state of now forum. We're speaking to one of them here, uh, Beth Bleckerman, uh, Beth of um, Tech Mama on Twitter, yes. and um, we're talking to Lisa, Liza Sp uh, Sperling, excuse me, of uh, Scout Labs. Yes, you got it. Great. Uh, first question to you. Um, so Beth, we heard a lot about how uh, women um, in particular are using technology and their businesses uh, are using real-time communication and um, are using particular one example being Twitter. So talk to us a little bit about how you're effectively using Twitter in your life. Oh, well, I, I uh, actually use Twitter as my real-time way to interact with my community. Okay. I have a Tech Mama blog, techmamas.com, but um, the blogging is something that you write a post. So I use Twitter as a way to communicate with real-time activities, news updates, all associated with my brand, which is parenting and technology. So, so Twitter is one of the stops on my social media platform, and it's really a great way to interact with the community. So I don't always just put out things. I also interact, reply, answer questions. I think it's really important to do all types of things on Twitter if you're going to have a community there. How, how large is your community right now? Well, I'm, I'm thrilled to have 11,000 <laughs> followers, um, but I, I treat them like a real community, and I really enjoy the conversations that, that I have on Twitter. So. Okay, Liza, let's talk to you. You uh, you produced um, the uh, 13 city campaign of yes, Tara Hunt, it was right? Tara Hunt. It was Wolfie Oki. So it was 13 cities from San Francisco to um, Canada, spreading Wolfie or sp it was called Wolfie Oki, but it was spreading karaoke, Wolfie, and love. Um, and it was amazing to actually see 13 cities come out and support perfect strangers. Um, so, so what, give us an example of one stop. What sort of what was the preparation involved? Uh, without going to too much, but but give give us a little insight as how it came together. Okay, so I was actually in my apartment while this uh, Winnebago was going across the country, um, but. The really one of my favorite stops was probably Des Moines because they organized a whole social media week around it. Events, speakers, food, sponsors, and literally sold tickets. So they, they created a whole event of this Winnebago coming to town. And the people who arranged it were brilliant. And they literally said, don't worry, we got it. There was no, no details until they actually rolled in. But I, you know, it was just sort of this trust that they were going to take care of it because it was valuable to them. All right. So uh, Twitter has shown to be very effective, uh, as you've just explained to us. But now let me let's let's bring in the other elephant in the room, Facebook. Uh, we know that Twitter is as, about as real time as you can get, uh, but there are now uh, half a billion Facebook users, which certainly trounces the number of Twitter users. Would you have a particular opinions as far as in your use of real time tools? Where does Facebook come into play for you? I think there's a big difference. My my demographic is moms and technology. So it's interesting on Twitter. There's whole early adopters, social media savvy people on Twitter. Uh, m everyday moms are all on Facebook. So it's a different community and you have to interact differently with them on Facebook. I can't share the same things I do on Twitter on Facebook because it's, it's also more personal. You're only out interacting with your friends. So I say to brands to make sure that they know Facebook is more of a personal and people have their friends there versus Twitter which is more of a public place and just more people that are a little bit more social media savvy are on Twitter. Liza, would you like to chime in on that? I think the technology point's a, good, a really good one because if my router breaks, which it's done a lot lately, I will literally do a screenshot of the error messages I'm getting and post them on Twitter. And immediately, I have their friends in the community who will reach out and say, have you tried this? Or, you know, should you, you should try this? Or this might be the problem. Whereas on Facebook, I don't think anyone would ever see that. I very rarely go directly to Facebook. I may have things that are posted there indirectly, but... You know, Twitter, friend feed, there are some other communities that you really can rely on a higher level of technical expertise versus, you know, sharing baby pics. But then also, it's important to note that from an event standpoint, I hear a lot of people have more success spreading the word about events on Facebook versus Twitter, believe it or not. And yes, and I think that's part of because some of the applications built on Twitter haven't been right. really great. I mean, I think the, the Facebook event tools are link better with Outlook and you know Google Calendar I think that's more of an issue but you're right the event stuff does not work 
Do, do either of you um, look to Twitter for breaking news or anything of that sort? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think just when you said I use it as my real-time source, I, I do as well. Um, very much so. If I, if I want to know what's going on at this particular conference, I'll put in the hashtag, which is 140Conf, and immediately I'll be able to see what's happening. Yeah. And typically you can ping that person and say, oh, really, you know, could you give me some more insight? Um, right. And a lot of those conversations are offline. So people think that we are sharing everything online, and they have no idea. <laughs> yeah, but I do believe that it's a, it's the source right now, the real-time source, because people are on Twitter, it's only 140 characters, and it's what you're doing right now. So for breaking news, for event coverage, for anything related to that, that's what I use Twitter for. And um, But again, if a business wants to use a, a platform like Twitter, uh, your ultimate recommendation is... Well, the recommendation is really make sure they set up the brand correctly and they're not only just uh, uh, broadcasting information out, that they're interacting with their community there or else it's just a waste of time. You need to interact with your community on Twitter as well. Any other comments on that? Mark? I would say pick a few brands who do it really well and follow them for a while um, before you dive in because... And ones come to mind? Uh, there are a lot. Um, you can think of big and small. Um, you know, Coke Zero is a great example of one that's a it's a it's a branch of a much larger brand, but they're not constantly pushing, you know, their product on you. They, they actually are very conversational and engaging, and, and they act, they do a great job of, of creating a conversation. You have a you have a very clear sense that there are people there, not Coke cans. Well, and also, uh, an example is sometimes uh, uh, companies using Twitter for customer support. For example, when I'm using GoGo InFlight, which is an InFlight uh, for, for airplanes, um, if I'm having a trouble, I will actually use Twitter, and the, the GoGo InFlight people will get to me right away. So that's a good use. If you're going to have a brand on Twitter, you need to have someone monitor it and respond to customer requests. Or right. Vistaprint. Vistaprint is a great example. Vistaprint puts on their Twitter account, these are the hours were available. So set, set the expectations, set the standards, because if you presume that, you know, that people think you know they're, they're offline at X hour, we, you know, this is real-time web. Yeah. There are different time zones, and you have to let people know when you are or are not available, or you're creating your own um, demise. Vistaprint has done an awesome job of just saying this is when we're here for you. All right. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for joining us uh, here today. It's been a fascinating uh, conversation. Thank you. And there's more to come from Connected Marketing Week, day three. Stay tuned for more.